Okay. You know what? I'm just going to go. Screw it. We're just going to look at all these freaking things I have. We're going to Minecraft. Bam. So, you may be thinking, I hate this guy and how he does ASMR. Because that's not what I want to see. And I think ASMR is stupid. And um, many of you all do not like ASMR. And you know, I, re I respect that. I was once you. Until I got converted to the dark side. But um, I got a couple of people who think the last ASMR video was cool. Want to see more. So here I am making more for the people who want to see more. So, and now you're thinking, what the, what the, come on, man. What do you mean, bro? Okay, well, you know what, screw it. We're just going to hop on the realm. We're going to do it there instead. So you may be thinking, uh, what are we doing this time? What are we, what are we going to do? And my plan was to read all the books. So, this, uh, this is a library, but it doesn't quite have what I'm looking for. So, I'm looking for some other stuff. So, we're going to go to my ender chest. And we're going to go to somewhere. Where's a good view? Where should I read this book at? Um, I don't know. I'm just gonna freaking man, come on. Where where can I read this? I really have. A, I've always liked this view right here because you get the most at your low render distance. So, it's like. Um, So, some of these are just like old weirdo books. Like, all these are just old things. Uh, these things don't really matter. And, um, yeah, so we're going to try and read all of these books in order of how they were put. I don't know. We're not going to read this one or this one. So, we're going to put these guys up there. And I don't think Jacob wants me reading that. So, Jacob J. Inc. So, we're going to read these five books here. Uh, I'm going to start it off with the best of the best, which is um, my buddy Sash's book. Is Daylight Cycle on? Can we turn that off, please? Uh, come on, man. You see, I've, I've tried turning it off already. Slash daylight. I don't freaking know how to do this either. Um, okay, slash uh, daylock. True. There you go. Now it's always daytime. So let me put these in order of how we're going to read them. We're going to comp end first. Um, make Cowboys last. Well, not last. How about we do State Districts last. Guide to Economy second. Then Crimson History. Make Cowboys. There you go. You can look at this. We're going to read comp end first. The Industrial Competition by Jacob J. Inc. Copyright 2021 published by Cube City Publishing. I just want to say that this is one of my favorite books that I've ever read in Minecraft. It's awesome. It talks a lot about business and the industrial competition, and it's really fun, and I think it's a great book. Views from Cowboy & Co., Clips Real Estate, Sash Industries, Crooked Co., and Avery Co. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some of these words wrong, and I'm going to screw it up. So just be ready for that. 
The industrial and commercial climate in current... It's actually spelled without the P, but I say it a lot of times with the P, because whatever. The industrial and commercial climate in Krim Ton is a very competitive community. Our governor, Cowboy, had this to say when I asked about his views. I feel the over-competitiveness in modern-day Krim Ton is stifling small businesses. I then asked him his I then asked him this <clears throat> Why would you care about small businesses if their failure makes less competition for you? He states, I care about the people, what the people care about. That's why I care about small businesses. I then asked him, then why in Cube City are there four McCowboys in places where small businesses could run? He says, look, me personally, if I were to not be rich, people would hate me. The upper class here practically controls stuff. That's what I'm saying I'm against. If I, if the upper class didn't control stuff, I wouldn't have to open up four locations. It's only because of this upper class, which I hate. I asked him one last question before being escorted out of his office for trespassing. I asked, but wouldn't you be the upper class? I was swiftly called an idiot and removed from the building. That's good. I then went to Sash Industries and Eclipse Real Estate to speak with their CEO, Sash. I asked him what his opinion on the matter was. His quote was as follows. Small businesses like those See, I ain't gonna say that, but y'all, me, y'all, mm, whatever, man. My mom might see this, so you know, y'all, y'all can read. Small businesses like those bass birds at Crooked Co. are stealing my livelihood and my customers. Crooked Co.'s CEO is such a hard person to contact that I've sworn off trying to reason with him. The competition here is just a stupid abundant. One sec, guys, I'm gonna adjust the microphone. He then laid down to relax. Sorry for bursting out like that. Regardless, I wish competition here was a little slimmer simply because the profits and connections I'm losing over it. I tried to connect with Crooked, but he wasn't available. Avery, C Avery Co's CEO has been missing for some time now, going under a different name and leaving his company. Whereabouts? Unknown. The competition in Crimton is rather high and tense, as shown by Sash in Public Opinion. Sources, Cowboy, CEOs of Eclipse Real Estate, Sash Industries, Crooked Co., and Avery Co., and a survey of citizens of Cube City. So that right there was comp, and talks about the competitive industry and the competitive market within Cube City, within Crimton. Um... I, it, I think it's a really good read. It's a <laughs> I think it's pretty light, and I really like it. It talks a lot about some funny stuff, and it, I don't know. It's I like it a lot. I love reading about business, and I love talking about business, and that just puts my love of business in a dang funny book on my city world, which has a lot of references to business in this world. So, yeah, I like that one a lot. And that's the only one by Sash we're going to be reading. So from here on out, it's going to be more official documents and it's going to be a lot more boring. So be prepared. Wait, I got to read the title. Guide to Economy. The state of Crimpton features a complex and ever-changing economy. The main feature of the Crimpton state economy is the MPD system. MPD stands for money per day. You raise your money per day by building buildings. Certain buildings give more money per day than other buildings. Some factors that can give a building more money per day than other buildings are 
The amount of effort spent on building the building, the location of the building, the purpose of the building, the size of the building, and most of all, the amount of overall profit that the building would make if it were to be an actual building in real life. A couple things that can give you negative amounts of MPD are abandoned buildings and owning lots of empty land. The reason that abandoned buildings would give the company a negative amount of MPD is because the building is taking up land that could instead contain a building that has an actual purpose and benefits the city more than an abandoned building. The reason that having unused land could result in your company getting a negative amount of MPD is due to the hypothetical of a different person or company wanting the empty land that you own. This makes the empty land that you own in demand. In this hypothetical, you own an in-demand piece of land with nothing built on it where another person or company could be building, or by this time already built, something on it. This situation negatively impacts the state of Crimpton. The way the situation negatively impacts the state is due to the main goal of this world being to expand and grow the state of Crimpton as much as possible. Denying a location the ability to be built on is against the goal of this world. Thus, I take away a small fraction of your MPD to inspire or force you to use up your empty land, thus getting the state of Crimpton closer to its overall goal, to expand the amount of city and decrease the amount of empty land. I ask you to please not let yourself own too much empty land. Thank you. There are more ways to make money in Crimpton than just getting your company's MPD, though. Some other ways to get money are by working for other companies and having them pay you, by helping someone, by building builds that are on the to-build board at Spawn. The amount of money you will make for these, will make for building these builds is also on the board. By selling things to other companies and by improving on already built builds. Permission needed, though. Another way to earn money is by demolishing certain unwanted buildings. Some buildings are very ugly, unwanted, unneeded, and invaluable spots, especially if the original builder has not logged in on has not logged on in a while. You could be paid for demolishing certain buildings. Please do not go around searching for buildings to demolish. 99.9% .9 of buildings are fine and will not be demolished. There are only a few, but if a building has a single block of red wool on it, it might be a building that needs to be destroyed. If you think a building was marked for demolition and you wish to destroy the building, please contact the governor and they will confirm or deny if it needs demolition and tell you how much you will be paid for demolishing it. In the case of getting paid for working for a company, the amount of money the company pays you, or if they pay you at all, is not regulated by the Crimpton government yet. If you believe that the company is being immoral, I immoral with their payment, then please contact your governor and they will look into whether or not the situation needs government intervention. Another feature of the Crimpton economy is inflation. Normally, inflation in Crimpton takes this form, prices of most pieces of land rising. The inflation system exists to keep super rich players from buying out very in-demand pieces of land without it hurting their balance. If a rich player can buy out all the land in the city, where shall less rich players build? Nowhere. Another feature in Crimpton are poor-only plots of land. These pieces of land are for poor players only. A poor player is someone who cannot purchase anything above $1,500. This is to give poor players who cannot afford the rapidly, rapidly climbing prices of land a chance to own at least a sm very small piece of land without richer players buying out the land. This system gives players a chance to build without forcing them to go off in the middle of nowhere to bad land zones just so they can afford a place to build. Another feature of the Crimpton economy is welfare. Crimpton welfare is a comparatively new system which rounds any player with below $500 up to $500.
For example, if you just started playing and I have no money, you get $500. Let's say you spent all 500 of your $500. If considered reasonable, the Crimpton government will give you $500. Let's say you decided instead of all your money that you would spend 400 of your dollars. You then have a chance to earn back those 400 bucks. Through the welfare system, oh, you then have a chance to make back these 400 bucks through the welfare system. This system exists to keep poor players playing without having to wait a long time for their next very little amount of MPD or otherwise having to work a ton to be able to build. <coughs> you may be thinking, how do I start receiving MPD? Well, you first must create a company. There are a few steps in creating a company. Think of a name for your company. Buy or create a building to be your company's headquarters or capital. Put a sign on your building or otherwise somehow inform your average player that the building is the main operating base for your company. Then, once your building is entirely finished and all the steps are done, have the governor come over and put a sign in the building that tells you what your company's MPD is. Now, you are ready to receive your first MPD. This first MPD will be rewarded unto you as soon as your company has been officially started. From here on out, on every separate real life day that you log on to the server, if the Crimpton State Governor is also on the server, you will be granted your MPD. Please remind your governor as he is probably not too focused on giving you your MPD on that specific day. Another feature in this economy, of this, another feature in the economy of this world is the rich tax. The rich tax is a system that changes, usually increases, the price of any purchase made by someone who has above $5,000. The amount of rich tax is based on how much money one person has. What constitutes having money though? I believe that having money is possessing in some way, shape, or form currency that you can spend. If you have an employee who has money that you say you can spend, then you have that money. Thus, when calculating your rich tax, you must factor in that money. Any money that you can legally spend yourself is money that you possess. If you are untruthful with the amount of money you possess, then you will be fined. The amount you are fined is based on how much money you said you had and how much money you actually had. Let's say you said that you had a million dollars, but you actually had a million and fifty thousand dollars. You will be fined fifty thousand dollars. The amount of money you say that you must have excuse me. Yeah. The amount of money you say that you have must be accurate down to the tens place, or you will be fined. This fine system is to prevent players from committing tax fraud. Very evil. To conclude there are 14 different features in the Crimson economy. They are money per day, MPD, in-demand land, working for people, the to-build board, selling goods and services, improving builds, demolishing builds, inflation, poor only land, welfare, companies, company HQs and capitals, the rich tax, and rich tax fines. Thank you for reading. I hope you now better understand how the Crimpton State economy works. Copyright the State of Crimpton Government, 2021. And there you go. That was the most recent book in our catalog, written by me. I'm pretty proud of it. I think it does a pretty good demonstration of how awesome the economy in this world is. See those little fences down there? The little brown boxes or whatever? Those are pieces of land that you can buy once you save up money, once you get money, once you have money, you can buy those pieces of land and you can be taxed on those purchases if you're rich enough or you won't be taxed if you're poor enough. See, I really love this system because um, it puts really rich players at a slight disadvantage and I feel that's needed because I want it to be like a game, like a grind. Like you're not just instantly going to be rich and then be like okay i can afford everything i want there to be as many systems in as possible to make sure that once you get rich 
it's like a grind. It's a grind to pay for land. It's a grind to do this and do that. And, you know, you're actually going down in money. And you got to keep it up. It's not just like, you know, you automatically get richer and richer and richer like the real world. <laughs> um because that's broken. That's broken. If I didn't put rich tax in, then there'd be $2,000 plots of land that poor players can't afford and rich players won't even care about purchasing. I want a rich player to have to think about making a purchase. I want a rich player to be impacted once they when they make too big a purchase. Um, and I think the rich tax system is doing pretty good at that. I feel like a lot of stuff is coming in handy. A lot of features that I've added are really working working well. So, yeah, that's what uh, this book is about. It's all about the economy in this world, how money works, how money's made, how money's lost, how purchases work, how selling things work. It's about everything, and I really love it, and it features everything I think it needed to feature. So, yeah, and then now we're moving on to one of the first books, which is this book. It's a pretty short one, but it's pretty boring. It's the Crimpton's History, version 3. This state is Crimpton. This whole world is called the state of Crimpton. And this is the history. It's not the real, like, actual, like, I created it when I was 12. It's, like, fictional history. It's, like, lore, you know? So let's get going. In 1778, an Indian tribe called the Mohaws founded a small village at the place where the Freedom Scrape, Grey Beast, and the Crooked Co. office buildings stand today. Let's go find those buildings. That building right there is the Grey Beast. It's very tall. It's gray. It's a beast. And now we're going to find the Crooked Co. office building and the Cowboy & Co. HQ. This right here is the Crooked Co. offices. And this right here is the Cowboy Co. HQ. So basically, in this little triangle is where they founded uh, their tribe or whatever. I don't know. So yeah. Uh, moving on in the book. Um, they existed peacefully until 1897 when Henry Ernvik founded the settlement of Crimpton. In 1905, they started expanding east. In 1908, they started a war with the Mohaws. It was a two-to-one battle in favor of Crimpton. In 1910, Crimpton won the war. Then, in 1911, they found an abundance of wood in Ohio. In 1936, Henry died of a heart attack. Then, in 1937, a 38-year-old man named George D. Lincoln became governor of Crimpton. You're going to see a lot of stuff like this where it's just like 1955, guy died, and then a new guy came into business. 1991, 1954, 19, you know, happens a lot. That's why this is a boring book. In 1942, Crimpton prepared for World War II. In 1944, they sent 50 troops to Omaha Beach, D-Day. It's one of the biggest battles of World War II, by the way, if you didn't know. In 1954, George D. Lincoln died at the age of 56 when he died of natural causes. I don't know what that means, but whatever. Then in 1955, a man called Peter M. Steve, at the age of 64, became the new governor of Crimpton. He died at the ripe age of 89. In 1981, a 57-year-old man called Jolk A. Robb was appointed governor of Crimpton. He died at the amazing age of 92. Then, Cowboy Legend 357 was appointed governor at the age of 11. Now, in 2018, he is still governor. Crimpton became a state of the USA in 2009. Dope. Now, this right here, this Mick Cowboy's book, is probably one of my least favorites. It's a, just, it's a, it's a bunch of opening locations some bull crap so I don't even think I'm gonna read this if y'all really want to read this then y'all can go ahead and read it but I ain't reading it because it's lame I don't feel like it get out of my hot bar and now we're gonna read another f 
favorite of mine. It's a lot like a guide to economy, except for it's about the districts of the state instead of the um, features of the economy. Let's start it up. <sighs> Manual to the five Crimpton districts. There was a four-way intersection right by where you spawn. Let's go there. We're going there. We're going to spawn. We're going to the four-way intersection. Okay, so these beacons are the four corners of spawn. This right here is spawn. And then this down here is the four-way intersection that divides the city into districts. So we're going to read this like up here, I guess. If you go north towards actual spawn, then you enter into the north side district. That's this way. If you go this way, you're in the north side district. Yeah. Some examples of what is in the district. The Sash Space Needle, the Seaback Extra Lane Apartments, the area with the two mansions in Northern Pines. That means that's in the northern district, that's in the northern district, all this stuff in the northern district the downtown district is what you enter when you go east at the four-way intersection that means this way everything that's like in these city blocks right here is um downtown yeah this district starts at downtown road as you can see right there uh let me get real close to it Downtown Road. Um, the first buildings on this road being the Post Office and the Seaback Cube City Bank. That's the Post Office and that's the bank. <sighs> the road with a space needle on it is not included in the down in the downtown. Doc, got it. In the downtown district, neither is anything in the Ohio forest or anything in the industrial zone where a few factories are located. Most of downtown is a very large grid of city blocks. These blocks can be named by a letter and number system. The horizontal rows of blocks are letters. For example, the block with the Cube City Bank is block A1, and the block where you can find Campton Bay is block B3. Another example of this system is that the baseball stadium block is D2. Warning, some of the blocks located in slash around the grid are not part of the downtown district, but are located in the south side district, or, I mean, there's, there might be more soon, might be more blocks in weird places. The south side district is what you enter when you go down Gray House Road at the four-way intersection. By the way, the four-way intersection is not part of any district, but it's part of the spawn area. So, let's check out this road. This right here is Gray House Road. It's that way. So, everything down here is south side. Everything on this road, all that crap, south side. Um, what, where are we? Um, the South Side District is mainly a housing district. Any building that has its main entrance going onto Gray House Road is counted as being in the South Side District, even if it is built on a block in the Downtown District grid of city blocks. For example, the Quartz Police Building is the South Side District, and so is the Jack in the Blocks. So this right here is the police station, and then feed the quartz police station, and then this building right on the corner here is the jack in the blocks. Excuse me. The South Side District also includes the entire city of Muffin City, which is a pretty tiny city. Another place that is included in the Southside District are the city blocks on the right of Greyhouse Road. 
Let's check those out too. Yeah, so these um, city blocks that go off the right of the road, these ones right here, all count as in the south side district. Uh, where are we? Uh, so, so we're on page eight. Cool. The Freedom District is named the Freedom District instead of the West Side District because the district has an emphasis on being very random and not conforming to just commercial or just one type of building. It's kind of a free-for-all sort of road. Anyways, you get to the Freedom District by going west at the four-way intersection down non-generic road. The first two builds on the road are the Blue Police Station and the Henry Earned Vic Statue, the fictional founder of Crimpton. We're on page 10. Let's check all these things out. So, we have our Quartz Police Station, and just across the street we have the Blue Police Station. And that's the statue. So, Blue Police Station statue. This right here is the Freedom District. Um, this, uh, These roads right here, like they lead up to the intersection. That part of the road is included in this district, even though it is north of the four-way intersection. So, yeah. And this is non-generic road. But yeah, it's a pretty random road with a lot of bull crap going on on it. So, that's why it's called um, non-generic road. That's why it's called the Freedom District. The district encompasses all of non-generic roads, some parts of Rectangle Road, Sanctuary Hills, Springway, and Scron Street. The Freedom District also includes Wood Creek, a town in Bursa City, also included in the Freedom District. What? There's a couple mistakes in this book, but whatever. The final district is the Ohio District. The way to get to the Ohio District is to go east on Downtown Road, all the way until you reach the Spruce Ohio City entrance sign, which symbolizes the start of the Ohio District. Let's go do that. We're on page 12. We're going to go all the way east. So this direction is east. So we just keep going this way until eventually there will be a spruce sign that goes above the road, and there's going to be a lot of spruce trees. Here we are, Ohio City, right there. So that's where the Ohio district starts. It's a pretty large district. Uh, the reason it's a whole nother district is because it kind of cuts into Cube City. And uh, I feel like it's required to have it be a district. Because it's not downtown, that's for sure. This part down here is not downtown, it's not north side, it's not any of that stuff, it's its own thing. And I feel like that distinction should be made. But yeah, this right here is the start of the Ohio district. The Ohio district includes the entirety of the Ohio forest, the entirety of the city of Ohio, and the Ohio river. To conclude, there are five districts in total, four of them corresponding to which direction you go in at the four-way intersection near Spawn. Every one of these districts have their own feel and theme, which I think is awesome. North is the North Side District, East is the Downtown District, South is the South Side District, West is the Freedom District, and the Far East is the Ohio District. Hopefully now you are more familiar with the unique five districts that make up the state of Crimpton. Thank you for reading. Copyright the State of Crimpton Government, 2021. There you go, guys. That should be all of the books. Hopefully now you understand the district system, the economy system, the history, and um, the competitive industry. Did we ever even finish the book here? Uh, no, we didn't. But why would we?
Wait, no, we did. We did. We did finish that book. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I have amnesia. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that's all the books. So that's a district. This this forest bit, and all and this whole map right there. That's a district, and then as you can see, eh, eh. In the bottom right corner of this like whole map, like all of this grid right here, is the downtown district. And then if you just go down on this road here, and then these little stuffs going on on the south side, you go this way, you can go down these roads just a little bit, and this whole map are all Freedom District. And if you go north, every single thing north of the border, north north of this main line is a um, north side district, including that map. So there you go, those are the five districts, that's the economy, that's the competitive industry, and that's the history. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it even more. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all around. Bye-bye.